Hey folks, it's, it's almost 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, I went out and I gathered up a little more wood and I gathered up the materials I need to make my camp chair. Um, so now what I want to do before I get going on the camp chair, I want to do just a short little discussion um, about water. I had mentioned in my um, one of my first videos about setting up camp. I had talked about um, how I selected this site and why I selected this site and the considerations that I always give when I'm selecting a site. Well, one of those, before you lean against a dead tree, give it a good push, make sure it'll hold you. I've done that, leaned against a dead tree, and there I go. Okay. I always give every campsite the same consideration, no matter what the purpose of the campsite. Now, like this campsite, I'm not here on a survival mission. I'm not trying to... Um, see how well I can survive in this spot. I'm here for pleasure. I'm just, I'm, I'm out camping for the pleasure of it these couple of days. Um, but it doesn't matter. All my campsites have the same requirements. First of all, I want high ground. I want to make sure I've got high ground. Second of all, I want to make sure that there's a slight slope that I can, it doesn't have to be steep, just a slight slope that goes away from my campsite. In case you have a deluge, a heavy downpour of rain, you don't want that water pooling around your shelter. And the last thing you want to do is wake up and find yourself in two to four inches of water. I've had that happen. Um, I've got a sty story for that one. Maybe I'll do that today too. Um, it's one of my younger days adventures before I had any experience to speak of um, but so you select your site for the fact it's high ground it's got a nice little slope to it you look overhead make sure there's no hazards that you don't have any any risk of widow makers or or dead standing that could blow over onto your shelter so make sure that it's safe above you also okay then you have to consider do you have a viable source of water you need water close by and to me water close by is anytime you've got water within a football field of you that's a hundred yards you're doing good you're doing good. Now, I've had campsites where I've had to um, hike a half of a mile to get to the water. Um, but the campsite had all the... It, it was a perfect campsite, just that water was a half a mile away. So that's a long ways to carry your water. And then the last thing that um, I consider is how close am I to a food source? Am I going to even be able to collect a f reasonable amount of food in that spot if I need to? Well, okay, this site has, this, has the high ground. It's got the slope. It's got game. There's ducks. There's geese. There's beaver. There's game all over the place out here. There, we got pine squirrels. I had two of them over here going crazy a little while ago so so there's food here um, and at the right time of the year there's a lot of wild edibles uh, plant life and it's got a viable source of water now like I said in an earlier video people will say that's beaver pond that's a you can't drink beaver water well <laughs> well you're not gonna drink beaver water you're gonna 
sanitize that water so that it is safe to drink. Um, I've had people say, "Well, you can't drink that. They 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 pee and poop in there. You can't you can't drink that. It's full of beavers, and they're there's full of it's beaver droppings all over in there, and and well." I tell you what, every body of water that you're going to find that's above ground, it's groundwater, has got animal droppings in it. Um, that's why you have to sanitize your water. One of the biggest risks here in this neck of the woods is Girardia. Now, when I lived out west, we moved out there. Um, there was actually a large group of people we moved out there with. We had had kind of like a joint project going on. We were going to develop uh, an 80-acre piece of property um, and homestead it and make it self-sustaining. Well, when we got there, there was nothing on that 80 acres, of course, and um, everybody started drinking out of the mountain creek that was running through the property and I said hey you shouldn't be drinking that water until you boil it they said no 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 that's mountain creek water you can't get any better water than that and I said well no I, I I'm not going to drink that I, I think we better boil that water and um, sure enough everybody in the camp got Girardia that's a parasite it's an in ingested parasite that affects your digestive system. And w the symptoms that come with it are like a very severe stomach flu. You get very nauseated. You have stomach cramps. you got the weakness. You just feel super weak. And, and typically, very severe diarrhea. Well, one of the biggest risks with it is dehydration. So um, keep in mind, if you drink contaminated water, it can create symptoms that can counteract what you drank that water for in the first place. All of a sudden, because you're drinking water, you're becoming dehydrated. Um, most people get over it, Girardia, um, rather quickly. Um, four to seven days, but there's also a large number of people that it takes three to five weeks for them to recover from it. So, <coughs> excuse me. So it is a it's it's a very big concern, and it's um, people do die from it. Um, and they, what they die from are the complications it creates. Um, if you have any health issues to start with, that's the last thing you want to do is catch that. Um, so, but can you then feel safe drinking water anywhere? Well, no, you can't. Uh, don't, don't trust any water. People say fast-moving water, a mountain creek that's just running fast, and it's white water, it's over the rocks, and it's ice cold. That water's always safe. No, it's not. We found that out because the creek that ran through our property ran very strong. It was a very strong creek. You could hear the thing a quarter mile away running. Everybody got sick off that water. Well, I drove up the valley that we lived in. It's more of a canyon. And I drove up in the mountains, oh, probably about, 10, 12 miles. And what did I come across? There's a rancher up there. And standing in that creek, there's like a like a meadow where there's the creek widened way out and it was shallow and it was wasn't running as the current wasn't strong like it was where it was narrow and rocky. This is a big meadow that the creek's coming through. It's full of cows. They're all standing in that water, and they're standing in water right up to their butts. And I'm watching them pee and poop right in that creek from my Jeep. I'm watching them. 
there they go, right in the creek that runs right past our property that those people have been drinking out of. And everybody on that property got ill. I got ill because I used that water to wash myself. I washed my face, and we swam in it. I got it in my mouth. I didn't swallow any of it, but I got it in my mouth. So I got the same illness. So you don't want to take this water and wash your face with it. You want to use sterilized water to wash your face. You don't want this water touching your lips. You don't want it coming in contact with your mouth. Take this water and boil it. People say, boil it three minutes. Other people say, five minutes. Some people say, ten minutes. I'm a some people. I say, boil it for ten minutes. It's not going to boil all off. I've had, heard people say, well, you'll boil it all off. Um, I've never boiled it all off. But, you know, maybe a little bit goes to steam, but I put I try to put a lid on it, <laughs> you know. Keep as much in there as you can, and, and you lose a little, so what? You're only losing a little. In 10 minutes, you're not going to die of thirst in 10 minutes, so just take the 10 minutes and be safe. Do not use the container that you collected that water in, pour it into a pot or a kettle, boil it, and then have that sterilized water and pour it into the container you went and fetched it with. Because now it, you just contaminated it again. It's just like it was the minute you went and got it. Put it in a clean, separate container, one that has not come in contact with that water. Um, Put it in your canteen. I always, I, I always say, don't use your canteen, the thing that you're going to drink out of, to collect water with. You should always have two containers for collect, one for collecting water, one for storing water. So don't let your storage container ever come in contact with that water. So can you drink beaver water? Absolutely. You just have to handle it properly. If it's muddy water, or it's got a lot of sediment in it. Run it through a filter. Run it through a piece of cloth, a bandana. You know, just take a bandana and use that and run it through into your the container you're going to be um, boiling it in. And um, I like to carry coffee filters because that work, they work very well for doing just that. Just pour it through a coffee filter. It takes a lot, almost all the sediment right out of it. So take the sediment, se sediment out, boil it, and drink it. Well, this is Stein Orth with a water tip out here at my camp, out at the pond. So I'm going to go off the air for a minute, and then I'm going to we're going to start on that chair. So catch the next video. We're going to do a camp chair.